off the evil spirits. Well, if you're going to scare off spirits, I suppose dinosaur figurines would be as efficient as any. Uh, but the bottom line, we don't know. These are several different ideas that have been proposed. It's interesting to lo notice, again, that 20, in 2600, you've got a tremendous variety, and the association with people seems to be uh, closer and <laughs> more, uh, uh, more frequent with the juvenile forms. And I think I can understand that. I mean, if you watch Jurassic Park, but some of the juvenile forms are depicted, uh, you know, they're kind of cute, and uh, uh, we can see why uh, humans might be more closely associated with, with these forms. We also find, besides dinosaurs, other uh, uh, out-of-place figurines. Here is a horse. This is typical of the Pleistocene horse, Ice Age. Uh, which wasn't supposed to be in Mexico till the Spaniards brought the horses. Uh, here is another one that uh, is with a man trying to ride it uh, who has lost his head. It's broken in this figurine. But uh, an amazing turn of events involves the, the find of the unfossilized tooth of a Pleistocene horse associated with the Pleistocene horse itself. This tooth was identified by George Gaylord Simpson of Harvard, who is uh, the leading expert on fossil horses, uh, was the leading expert in the world. Well, here is the Pleistocene horse. Here is the Pleistocene tooth, unfossilized, found with it. Uh, the mystery deepens, or at least maybe <laughs> the, the picture, contrary to the standard evolutionary picture, is, uh, is getting more difficult. Uh, we went back to try to verify Gardner's research. I think he did an excellent job. We thought, well, let's just look and see if we can repeat what he did and uh, re-verify. Uh, we wanted to do original excavations, and we approached this with uh, some of the leading experts to get permits, and permits have to be obtained from ENA. This is the Institute of uh, Archaeology there in Mexico. And we applied three different times with the University of Texas first, and then with uh, David Soleil, who at the time was director of the Museum of the Rockies. He's actually Jack Horner's boss. Jack Horner is the individual, if you saw Jurassic Park, the real life character that uh, it, 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 the story is based on. He's the, the fellow represented as digging up dinosaurs up in Montana. Well, his boss, the director of Museum of the Rockies, David Soleil, went with us, and we applied together for permits, and they were all denied. And we were told firmly, actually the mayor of Acomboro was told that we would never be given a permit, that uh, the implications would not be allowed. Actually, we found out that Ina had done their own investigation back in 1953. They sent four archaeologists to Acomboro to do official excavations there. They chose their own site over a mile away from Yule's Rudd site, and they found figurines, a number of them, six feet down, including dinosaurs, and acknowledged that the figurines were authentic, but not so with the dinosaurs, which were found in the same place by them at the same time, at the same level, together. They couldn't be, and uh, we actually intercepted the interdepartmental memo, and we have exactly what they said about this, and this is from a memo dated February 24th, 1954. Apparently, those artifacts were gathered scientifically, but even so, they are reproductions of relatively recent times, and they're talking here about the dinosaurs. Uh, in our opinion, it is impossible that man existed at the same time as those saurian that lived millions of years ago. So they're acknowledging, yes, they are dinosaur figurines, but they could not have been with man, and so they just simply deny it. Continuing, they say, it's our opinion, in our opinion, the only archaeological artifacts are the collections of vessels and other Chipiquero pieces that they found at the same time. These are authentic and represent great archaeological value for our study. So in the same hole, at the same time, <laughs> they found authentic ones, but dinosaurs with them couldn't be, and so they just deny it. That's why it is the philosophical pressure that says you cannot have humans and dinosaurs together. That would destroy the picture of evolution that's in the textbooks. 
And so here's what's real and here's what's not, not based on the evidence, but based on the philosophical conclusions. We brought an expert down to examine these. This is uh, Jim Collins, who is with the University of Texas. He's an art instructor, a ceramics expert. And he found a, a number of things about these uh, figurines that we didn't know. For instance, uh, he found many, or most of them, were actually double fired. Some had wondered how such fragile figurines could be uh, maintained intact in the earth all of these years. And of course, if you go to the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, you'll see dozens uh, of similar figurines that remained intact, which they don't question. But these have been double fired. These people uh, were rather sophisticated in their technique. And of course, somebody just making fakes by the thousands wouldn't go to this kind of trouble. Uh, you can see that some of them were broken, and where they are, you can see evidence of this slip on the outside that is uh, a sophisticated pottery technique. This is compared with the broken piece from the National Museum of Anthropology and compares favorably with it, actually better fired than this uh, excellent piece. We went back to the house that the police chief owned, uh, under which Earl Stanley Gardner had uh, excavated 43 pieces of Yule's Rudd type material and found that it had been covered with modern brick now in modern times, and that was somewhat disappointed. We wanted to see the adobe brick. We did look across the street, and sure enough, there it had not been covered by modern brick. The adobe brick was still obvious. And as we looked carefully here, uh, Professor Collins is looking closely at those brick, and you can see, yes, as Earl Stanley Gardner said, they are studded with the pottery pieces from the Chipicoro culture, and that's obvious. And as we look carefully at one of the bricks, this is directly across the street from the house of the police chief, where Earl Stanley Gardner investigated. In one of those bricks, lo and behold, there's a dinosaur sticking his face out. And if you listen very carefully, you can hear him say, na 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 na, -na. <laughs> just making a mockery of the idea that man and humans have to be millions of years apart. Uh, these brick done 50 years before Yules Rudd arrived contained pieces <laughs> of the uh, ancient Chipicoro culture, which were scattered in the clay and scooped up and uh, used to, to make brick, not intentionally taking the fragments, but you just can't scoop up the material without getting some of them in it. Let's go back and look carefully at some of the witnesses who have testified to the fact that they helped Yules Rudd excavate these and that these were parts of uh, what was found from original excavations. One of the more credible witnesses, I believe, would be the grandson of Walter Mary Yules Rudd. He is uh, a rather well-known contractor uh, in the area. Uh, he is uh, well-to-do, well-educated. He's standing here beside the grave of his grandfather, testifying about going out and excavating these figurines with him. We have uh, uh, about 20 minutes of recorded testimonies with him standing right there by the grave, telling of the figurines that he helped his father excavate. Uh, this is one of the ones that he had in his uh, very nice home there uh, in Lyon. And here, uh, this, this is a beautiful dinosaur of the sauropod type that he personally excavated with his grandfather. We also found, as we investigated uh, and talked to a number of witnesses, that uh, El Toro was not the only site where dinosaurs were found. On the opposite side of the city, the north side, you find El Chivo. Goat Mountain, and at the base of this mountain, there was a lake and a site where ancient Chipicoro people had uh, had made dwellings, and uh, you can see places where the, the dwellings were there uh, between the lake site and the bottom of the hill. And I was taken there by uh, an individual, uh, Mr. Espinoza, who is now an accountant there in Acombro who as a teenager went with uh, Waldemar Yulsrud. He had enlisted several of the young people to go with him to help him dig and to help him carry back the materials that they found. And he took me to the spot. He said, here is where we 
dig where we dug, and here is the type of thing we found. He drew sketches of the materials. A very credible witness. And then we have Dr. Hinion, who is uh, actually a hero in Acombro, or at least uh, I, I would describe him as such. Several did to me. Uh, he has a medical practice in, uh, in Guadalajara, uh, several miles away, but he comes back on the weekends to help the poor people of Acombro. Uh, their culture, their, their, their economy is not nearly so thriving, and many of them are poor. And he practices medicine there in Acombro, free of charge, to help those who are poor. He could run for mayor and win hands down. He's not interested in that. He's interested in helping people.